In yesterday's video, we tied up all loose ends related to our companions, and we successfully threaded together the ambient music tracks that we got from each floor into a short song that we used as a key to open up the elevator to bring us to the vault. But there's another way to open this elevator that I did not cover in yesterday's video, and with it we can learn more about how one of our companions can help us in our final battle. After threading together the song and coming back up to Veriki's room, we can again talk with Christine. You're back. And tell her that we dealt with our other companions and we got the key phrase. Surprised that super mutant didn't eat you. And don't get me started on Dean. Now that we've threaded the song together, Christine, we know the key phrase you need to speak to access the vault. You did. Looks like even the old world can't keep you out when you've got a mind to get in. So, I just rasp out some words and the vault opens? That woman, the starlet, she didn't build this place. Why would the builder do that? I'm not entirely sure. This place doesn't feel like just a casino. I know. The sealed doors, the security... It's almost a fortress. I think that's why we're being ordered to come here and crack it open. It might have been the object of someone's obsession or affection. Love makes people do strange things. Won't argue that. It can drive you crazy sometimes if you can't... connect. If they loved each other, and they were together, I suppose that's all that mattered. But she's in that side room, dead, because the casino wouldn't let her leave. Who knows where he is? Maybe there was a trust issue here. It feels like Sinclair built this place just for her. It's possible. This place is immense. And it still has power, food dispensers, security. Was it all for pre-war guests? Or for her? Whatever the reason, it's time to unlock the vault. The phrase is, begin again, let go. All right. If you go down there, are you prepared? What if you don't come back? She offers the same response to either of these options. What do you mean, Christine? I just wanted to make sure you're ready. When you go down there, that may be it for us. We won't be needed anymore. The one who made these callers, he'll follow you down there. And he won't let you leave. He's not one for sharing. Never was. And she offers the same response to all of these options, too. Passing a 7 perception check, we can say, Ah, that's why you're waiting here in this room. You're going to kill him when he arrives. I... I... can't let him leave here. Look, you've done so much, and he's not going to show himself until you go down there. Christine, don't worry. I'll take care of Father Elijah. Do you trust me? If you do, you need to let go of this. I can't let go. Every time I've thought about it... I've lost him so many times. He needs to die. What happened here with us? He's... he's done so much worse. If Father Elijah kills you, I won't be able to get out of the vault. I know. And he will kill me. I can't get the collar off. Even if I could, I need to be sure. See his eyes, his face when he dies. Let him come through the suites and follow me. This elevator is the only way to the vault. He's going to come through here. If somehow I fail, and if he escapes, you'll be here waiting for him. You have to promise me. Promise me you'll deal with him. If I see him, I... He won't escape, Christine. I swear. All right. All right, I'll... But I'll need to leave this floor. He'll pick up my collar and... Sadly, one of the only options I get here is to tell her that I don't want to know where she's going, and that I'll find her later. I really do want to know where she's going, but we don't have the option to find out. I... never mind. Let me get the vault open. Begin again, but know when to let go. <laughs> Sounds like you. With that, Christine walks to the intercom and says the passphrase. Begin again but no one to let go. Those are the two options we have to gain access to the vault. But now, we must go down. Once we reach the vault, 
If we saved all of our companions, we get the achievement all for one. Save all of our companions. At the end of this hallway, we open a door to see the vault floating above a sea of the cloud, waiting to be raided. But we can't get out of this little pod. There are blue force field barricades blocking the exit. And we realize that there are speakers here too. We're going to have to find another way in. Accessing the vault maintenance access terminal, we can open the maintenance access hatch and read a note called Elevator Protocols Warning. Here we learn that if somebody disables the vault security protocols and if the vault terminal is breached, then the elevator as a safety precaution will automatically return to the executive suites and lock permanently in place. If that happens, there is no way to operate the elevator ever again and the vault area will be resealed much like it is now. We also learned that at the request of the man who made this vault, Sinclair, there is no manual or terminal override once the elevator is locked. Once initiated, it cannot be undone. So we learned something very important here. In order to get past these blue barricades, we have to disable the vault security. But there's a terminal inside the vault that, if accessed, will send this elevator to the top floor and shut it down permanently locking whoever accessed that terminal in the vault forever. Going through the nearby door and continuing down, we now come upon a maze. Here we have to weave in and out amongst catwalks, most of which have partially collapsed, been eaten away by rust or acid or otherwise eroded. Many of these speakers are shielded, which means we can't explode them. And few of them are connected to terminals, which leaves us one option to run quickly past. This game of trial and error inevitably ends in our deaths over and over again until we memorize where each of these speakers are and the dead zones where we can stand in safety. Once done with the speaker challenge, we arrive on a floor guarded by security holograms. It may be tempting to bypass these guards and simply jump from platform to platform, but if at any time we miss, we fall into a pit of endless cloud, which equates to instant death. Instead, we can do our best to sneak around from terminal to terminal to reroute the security holograms to patrol different places. This allows us to exploit the hologram's poor field of view, meaning we can sneak by when their backs are turned. That said, I still found the most effective way of getting through this challenge is to just get through it quickly. Running from terminal to terminal and using stim packs when necessary, we are able to hide strategically until we access a hallway that leads us out. From one of these terminals, we can deactivate the vault security, or if we miss it, there is one more terminal we pass by before entering the vault area to disable the vault security. Disabling security is the only way to lower the blue force fields barricading our entry. We see the vault at the end of the platform before us. It remains in surprisingly good condition after 200 years, though there does appear to be some sort of power surge. We see electricity shooting, almost like a Tesla arc. Now we open the door. Accessing a terminal by the vault door, we see a note that says, Only the trustworthy may enter the vault. Frederick Sinclair. Clicking unlock the door to the vault, and the door swings open. But as soon as we step in, it closes shut behind us. To the right of the door, we find a vault turret control terminal, but it's locked with a very hard lock. We need a skill of 100 or more to access it. And now we can explore the vault. The western wall is unremarkable. We find a box, some books, a radiation king radio. Next to it, a scientific table with beakers, experiments still bubbling, and a doctor's bag. In the corner is a red mainframe, and in the middle of the room is the master terminal with a knocked over chair next to a giant seal that says Sierra Madre, begin again. On the desk is a single bar of solid gold that weighs 35 pounds. Holy cannoli, but it's worth 10,539 caps. Continuing along the wall, we see a vending machine that may come in handy. And then on a table next to it is the greatest treasure we've ever seen. A stack, three different stacks, three towers of gold bars, each weighing 35 pounds, each valued at 10,539 bottle caps. The table is also littered with pre-war money and Sierra Madre coins. And in the gun cabinet next to it, oh my goodness, it's an armory. 1,000 rounds of .357 Magnum ammunition, energy cells, laser pistols, and a ton of Sierra Madre armor, both reinforced and unreinforced. 
which is perfect for those of us who use the armor and may need to repair it in the future. What a haul! All that remains is to check the terminal. Before we can access the main terminal, we have to disengage the vault security protocols. To do that, we access the other terminal to the left of the door, which has an option to disengage the protocols. Once done, we can then access the vault control terminal on the table. Inside the terminal, we find a note from Sinclair to Vera Keys. The note finishes the pre-war story of this drama, and it tells us where Sinclair's corpse is. It also warns us, Sinclair put one personal log on this terminal in particular as a lure for a man he knew was trying to rob from the casino none other than Dean Domino. If we access the note, we read that Sinclair knew that Dean was coming to rob this casino, and instead of a vault filled with riches, he created this vault to be a trap. A trap for Dean and Dean's accomplice. By reading this note, the reader is now permanently trapped inside the casino. The elevator has already gone to the top floor and is locked down permanently. He says, the door has sealed, the elevator has left. Not even Vera's voice can unlock it. Rest in peace, Sinclair. Even though we are not Dean Domino, we still just read this note. What does it mean? It means the end of the game. The courier, lured by the promise of the Sierra Madre, could not escape. Once inside the vault, the casino did not let go. When the courier finally passed away, the casino created a new hologram to walk with the other ghosts that filled its casino. It was a pre-programmed homage intended for another. It assumed a new meaning in the likeness of the courier. A means of allowing even the dead to begin again. And with that, the game is over. But let's pretend for the moment that we didn't ignore every single warning that was blatantly placed in our way, warning us not to read that note, and instead we read Sinclair's letter to Vera Keys and we exited the terminal. After leaving the terminal, a screen opens up on the wall behind it. You. You're in the vault, finally. After all this time. The Sierra Madre. Mine. Don't move. Don't go into the vault, and don't touch anything else. There may be more traps down there. Another security system. How did you access my Pip-Boy? You speak as if your fingers have never touched the keys of a Robco terminal. No machine is foolproof. They are designed to obey us. The Pip-Boy operating system has vulnerabilities. Advantages to those who've studied its construction, even superficially. It's just a machine, though. Its real vulnerability is who wears it. And that's how you were caught. Well, you sure needed it to escape. Proud that you have one? I can hear the superiority. That thing on your wrist. It's a convenience. It tells you where to go, what to do. Dulls your brain. It may have helped you find the Sierra Madre broadcast, but it's just as much a crutch today as it was in the old world. Elijah, you have a lot to answer for. Do I? For what? Your greed? Curiosity? You came here on your own. No one held a gun to your head. I've seen your Pip-Boy archives, your map markers and notes. You picked up the Sierra Madre signal just as I did. You couldn't resist. So if you feel I have a lot to answer for, no, the blame isn't on my shoulders. Might as well have put the collar on yourself. I wasn't the one hiding all this time. Hiding? Hardly. Trapped. You think you were the first one to unlock the casino door? No, I did it. With other hands, other bodies. After that, the casino wouldn't let go. Once I was locked in, no way out. Until your Pip-Boy signal came to life in the villa. Then, then, uh, things changed. And here you are. So just like the casino grabbed Christine, Dean, Dog, God, and the Courier when we entered the casino, it grabbed Father Elijah as well, keeping him imprisoned someplace, just like it imprisoned Vera Keys. He wasn't hiding this whole time, he was trapped, and he needed our help to find an exit. Elijah, before this goes any further, I have questions. Curious? You must be. We have time now that you've done your work. 
and our interactions have been too one-sided, even for my tastes. Father Elijah, what do you want from the Sierra Madre? What do I want? Weapons, security, a citadel of my own. The Madre is all these things. It's a fortress, a weapon, a chance to begin again. Once I unlock its archives, I can carve the Mojave into any shape I choose. I don't understand how an old world casino can help you do any of that. The cloud is unique in my travels. Its proximity to the Sierra Madre isn't a coincidence. Right now it protects this casino, preserves it. It can be used to preserve other old world relics and cleanse them at the same time. And as much as I've researched hologram technology, the big empty facility was clear. Only the Sierra Madre got holograms working properly. Working properly? Are you kidding me? The holograms here kill trespassers. That's what I want. Dump one of those emitters in the middle of any battle, there's no defense. It's like holding light in your hands. Can't fight it. Only watch it burn. Just one is a portable army. Arm it, anyone stands against you, dies. So you want to secure the cloud, is that all you want? No, there's one last thing I want from the Sierra Madre. It's bounty. The machines that fill its streets, its corridors. They provide, provide almost anything. Perhaps in the pre-war era they were commonplace, things to dismiss. Now they are far more valuable. You know it. They helped keep you alive. What would you use them for? Sources of food, supplies, medical assistance, ammo, make more callers, even print currency. Make a nation. The cloud allows me to wipe the slate clean. Callers ensure cooperation. Holograms, defense. The vending machines provide everything else. The Sierra Madre can kill nations and build them, using its technology with the right applications. Now, only if we know Veronica, and only if we have completely exhausted her storyline, we find an option here to tell Elijah that we know her former student. We can say that we know that he is Veronica's mentor, the elder who lost Helios I. Veronica? She survived Helios? She would. Resourceful. As for losing Helios One, that was the only outcome aside from retreat. MCR swarming like ants over old world relics. Hoover Dam. Helios. I won't let those children seize anything else. Harden. McNamara can't stop them. Won't. So I will with the old world as my weapons. You want to attack the NCR, all of the NCR? Attack? No. Not attack them. Wipe the slate clean. Make the Mojave like it was meant to be. Undisturbed by man. I'll send the cloud, the holograms. Bring ruin in my hands until only I stand atop the Helios One Tower again. I'll scour over dam with the cloud, rain its walls with spears from the sun, with an army of old world ghosts behind me, holograms all. I'll kill them until it's only me, me, alone, in a quiet world, in a world that's nothing like what happened at Helios 1. Now, if we are not sympathetic with the NCR, we can tell him so. We can say, I don't care about the Republic, they're yours to kill. I know that. Their days were numbered since they occupied Hoover Dam. And if we have extremely bad karma with the NCR, if they despise us, we find an option here to side with Father Elijah. Elijah, if you want to kill the NCR, that's fine with me. I've read your Pip-Boy, seen what you've done. If you wish to end them, I could use someone like you. Resourceful, uncompromising. NCI has many soldiers, many citizens. 
Well, then why turn me into an enemy? It would be wiser to join forces. We can destroy the NCR together. Ah, hmm, perhaps. Perhaps I was too quick to put a collar on a potential ally. Very well. I'll come down and show you what the Sierra Madre has in store. With that, Elijah comes down, and we become partners. In the years that followed, the legend of the Sierra Madre faded, and there were no new visitors to the city. Years later, when a mysterious blood-red cloud began to roll across the Mojave, then west toward the Republic, no one knew where it had come from. Only that it brought death in its wake. Attempts to find the source of the toxic cloud failed. The Mojave was cut off. Through the cloud, lights were seen from Helios 1. There were stories of ghosts immune to gunfire who struck down anyone they saw with rays of light. The last chapter of the Mojave came when a modified Repcon rocket struck Hoover Dam, releasing a blood-red cloud, killing all stationed there. All attempts to penetrate the cloud and retake the dam failed, and both the NCR and Legion finally turned away from it, citing the place as cursed. Only two remained alive in the depths of the cloud at the Sierra Madre, waiting for their new world to begin again. And that is the end of the game. The Courier and Father Elijah dominate the Mojave Wasteland using holograms and the cloud. But let's say we don't want to go on a murderous rampage with a former Brotherhood of Steel elder gone crazy. Instead, we can say, you're nothing more than a killer that aspires to mass murder. You think I'm a murderer? If I was, I'd have set off your collar long ago. The collar ensures compliance, encourages cooperation. Think about it. Would you truly have gotten into the casino without those collars? No. Human nature is against us, always. Did you know that I had to keep adjusting the collars? Keep changing the rules to make this moment possible? What are you talking about? Every time, even with collars clutched at their necks, they would betray each other, kill each other to get inside the Sierra Madre. It... It was insanity. They could have had it all. It was so close. And... And they kept turning on each other, again and again. Cracking the Sierra Madre was difficult, but cracking greed, that was more difficult. So the dead man switches within. So you answered madness with madness. When your life is tied to another's, sacrifice and cooperation, they can be conditioned, learned, and you can focus on the matter at hand. Greed can be beaten. Contained. Controlled. You know it better than anyone. Or I hope you do. It doesn't matter. I've heard speculation from some of my companions, but I need to know from the source. Elijah, how did you get me here? Everyone asks that. Should be asking how they plan on leaving. It only takes putting a collar on one to begin the chain. One with a collar may chain another, and that one another had traps all over the wastes. The chain ends with a super mutant. Although with him, the collar wasn't even necessary. He only needed guidance. So someone else put that collar on me? I think I know the answer to this, but who exactly? The mutant. <laughs> he swallowed one of the collars. After that, he was mine. The collar wasn't even necessary. All his kind, they exist to be given orders. They're soldiers, simple, stupid. I asked him to fetch, and he did, even without the threat of death. Even when I stopped speaking to him, he continued to leave the villa, gather victims from the man traps out of habit. He must have found you in one of them. If so, he's probably forgotten. He only remembers my voice. He put the collar on you, dragged you here, because he doesn't know any better. It's in his nature, greedy and childlike. If Dog put a collar on me, why didn't he say so? Dog? Huh. Appropriate. It's what I called him. You've met him. You know why he forgot. His brain was ruined by FEV. His memory wreckage. 
He may know the way back. Somewhere. Deep down. I doubt it. He tracks by smell and instinct. Still, he could be trained. Do you know how to get out of here? Of course. I walked all this way. If you're worried, I'll give you a map back or show you the way out when this is all over. How did you first learn about the Sierra Madre? It started with a setback, fires, blood, beneath the sun, a sun so close you could touch it. Moments like that, however, failures, can provide the brightest clarity. This failure he's talking about is his failure at Helios 1. Helios being the personification of the sun in Greek mythology. After that, I wandered alone, saw the storms of the divide, walked among the ciphers of the west, traveled to the big empty. I heard the signal. The woman's voice, the Sierra Madre, promising a chance to begin again, reverse my fortunes. All nonsense. I tracked the signal, came here, sculpted the city, using other hands, kept dying on me, killing each other. You, you got the farthest of all. Here he foreshadows what we will soon discover in the other New Vegas DLCs. The Divide, the Ciphers of the West, the Big Empty. Where did you get the collars, Elijah? The collars? They're pre-war tech. I suspect this great land had compliance issues before the war. It's one of a series of models. The one in your neck? Special. Easier to make adjustments. Unreliable in other ways, notably radio interference. Okay, pre-war tech, but where'd you get them? A place far from here called the Big Empty. Almost didn't make it out. Were two others there. A woman. And a man. A courier. The woman was familiar. The other? I don't know what happened to them. The familiar woman is, of course, Christine. And the courier is the very same courier that Christine told us about when we met her in Vera's room. This is even more foreshadowing to what we will discover in The Big Empty. But right now, we have no idea what that place is. Father Elijah, I've never heard of that place you're talking about. Big Empty's a treasure box. A scientific graveyard of old world misery. Like the Sierra Madre, there's treasures there, sleeping. Some. Awake. The holo rifle, the Saturnite alloy, the hologram technology, hibernation chambers, securitrons, the collars. Even the suits attached to those things stalking the villa. That's only the surface of what's there. Right now, the Sierra Madre is what I want. As fascinating as your story is, Elijah, I'm done talking to an image on a screen. Are you going to come down now? No. I'm not going to take the chance while I'm so close. Not this close. No. Not again. I can wait. Afford to be careful. You? You're locked down there. This is the only entrance. And I have free reign of the Sierra Madre. I have time. More than you. Besides, there might be more traps. I'll send more scouts in. Yes. Others. You're resourceful. Don't want to leave anything more to chance. Look, I'm not interested in the contents of this vault. I just want to leave. Then all you need to do is wait. Be patient. <laughs> you may be down there for a while. Just as I was. Trapped inside the casino. Consider this punishment for following the Sierra Madre signal in the first place. So eager to rush ahead. Now, enjoy your reward. We can respond here a number of ways. I'll show them all to you. But first, let's respond by being cooperative. Father Elijah, if you want me to wait, I'll cooperate. The Sierra Madre genuinely does not matter to me. Hmm. Compliance. Good. The others fought, argued, if they had only obeyed. I see the caller has done its work. I can hear it in your voice. Stand and wait outside the vault, where I can see you from the elevator. With that, the monitor slides closed. 
We can now exit the vault. Opening the door, we step outside and walk to the doorway near to the elevator exit where we came in to await Father Elijah. At last, we see the elevator door slide open and Father Elijah steps forward. But as soon as he does, he accuses us of theft. Did you really think you could steal from me? The Sierra Madre is mine. And with that, he activates the vault's security. Seeing what I can do to shut those turrets down from up here. Come on. Come on. But our friends, our companions, they come to our aid. If we kept Christine alive, she destroys some of the turrets for us. Got it. Two of them down. Can't shut down the others. He's cut off access. Damn it. Put him down. Bury him. Whatever it takes. Even if we didn't touch a thing in that vault, he still accuses us of theft. There is no way to leave Father Elijah alive and to leave this vault alive without siding with him earlier, without pledging to destroy everyone in the Mojave. As we continue to fight these turrets, we hear from our partner, Dean Domino. Is, is this thing on? You hear me down there? Trying to help you out here, disable the speakers, play a little music. And that's more like it. Got a beat you can swing to. And they won't set off your collar anymore. Just hit that guy where it hurts. And what a relief that is. We now have full range of this platform. We can attack Father Elijah from any angle. What's more, it makes our retreat that much easier. After taking out the few remaining laser turrets that Christine did not already destroy, we can focus our attention on Father Elijah. Ah, pre-war junk. I'll put you down myself. As soon as he dies, the vault is rocked with explosions. We hear our bomb collar beeping. We need to hightail it out of here fast. Before we do, we can loot his corpse, and on his body we find Father Elijah's robes, a unique armor item, and a Gauss rifle. A very powerful weapon indeed. But now the clock is ticking. If we're not fast enough, our head will explode. The blue force fields are still in place. We can't go right to the elevator. Instead, we have to wind our way back through the facility the same way we came. This can get tricky if the security holograms are still in place. But if we're quick, if we ignore them, if we keep running, if we take shortcuts, leaping between platforms, leaping down when necessary, we finally make it to the pod through the maintenance door, open the first elevator door, open the second elevator door, and race as fast as we can to the elevator. But this is only one way to defeat Father Elijah. Maybe we don't want to be all nice and compliant. Maybe we feel like he does not deserve our obedience. We find many other options here. Speech, barter, lockpicking, science. All of them with the same goal. To lure Father Elijah down to the vault. The first option is to try and persuade him. Elijah, you've waited long enough. Don't you want to finally see what's in this vault? I've lost much in the past by... Falling to my instincts. This time, this time will be different. But Elijah, both of us working together has allowed us to get this far. True. The callers have worked better than I'd hoped with adjustments. Still, I'm not eager to leap into another trap. The Sierra Madres are yours. This experience has taught me human nature is... Unreliable. You say your freedom is important to you. So did the others that filled the villa before they turned on each other. Indeed, the collar has done its work or we wouldn't be at this point. Hmm. The collars, yes. Technology solves so many ills. I'm coming down. I'll meet you face to face at the vault entrance. No tricks. If you prove troublesome well, there's always the caller. He comes down, but if he spots us, he turns on the vault security. The same result as last time. 
Another option is to tell him that if he doesn't come down, we'll uncover all of the secrets to this vault and loot the place. You've gotten far. Any farther, try to breach the vault, you become a corpse. What's inside is mine. Anyone else touches it, tries to take it from me, they'll answer for it. But Elijah, we've already managed to unlock the elevator and get down here before you. You better hurry. This casino is in some caravan safe, and the lock that secures the Sierra Madre vault doesn't hold all its secrets. Oh, that's fine. Stay up there and wait. I'll keep myself busy down here. Find a way inside? You can try. The Sierra Madre is a patient thing, and it has outlasted many who've come to its doors. The punishment often equals a reward for those without the foresight to see what's in store. I'll let you test the security. See how you stand up. You know, the Sierra Madre is just one big, huge combination lock. Me? I've almost cracked it. I've had enough, enough of others stealing from me. I'm coming down. Forget the Sierra Madre security. I'll find you myself. Try to break into the vault, I'll set off the caller. And with that, we prey upon his greed to get him down to the casino. The final option is to threaten him. Unless you come down here, Elijah, I will destroy the vault and everything in it. No, I don't think so. It'd most likely trigger other security measures, if you hurt the vault at all. The builder of the casino built it to last. The Sierra Madre withstood the war. I'm sure the vault is protected as well. Besides, You wouldn't have followed the signal if you didn't want this place's secrets for your own. You're curious. Past the threats. All it takes is destroying a single terminal or holotape. You might destroy access to the data, not the data itself. Besides, there would be safeguards in place. Maybe too many safeguards, as you've discovered already. Wasn't it a safeguard that trapped you in the casino? But... You recognize the value of what's down there. You would no sooner destroy what's inside the Sierra Madre than destroy yourself. Persist in threatening me or the Sierra Madre secrets. You're of no use to me. I'll set off your collar now. But you know that there's a noticeable lag of several seconds before the collar goes off. And it gives me a warning. Huh. Clever. Whoever designed the Sierra Madre, their obsession with messing with frequencies and signals. I'm coming down. I'll meet you face to face at the vault entrance. If you resist, I'll use the collar even if it puts the vault at risk. Now, Father Elijah is on his way down. We've already done it the guns blazing way. Now let's do it the stealthy way. And while we're at it, let's pull off the greatest heist in history. The heist that Dean Domino could not do. The heist that we are now robbing from Father Elijah. How do we take all of this gold home with us? Well, it's a bit tricky. Each of these gold bars weighs 35 pounds. Not to mention all the pre-war money, not to mention all the chips, and not to mention the locker filled with weapons and armor. Weapons and armor that we can't get in the Mojave Wasteland. Where are we going to find Sierra Madre armor? We have got to loot this stash. But now, we are completely burdened. We can't move but at a snail's pace. My recommendation is that you loot everything you want to take with you before you talk with Father Elijah on the terminal. That way, all you have to do, once he says he's coming downstairs, is to walk out the door. Once we are outside, we can put on our assassin's armor that we found in the Sierra Madre clinic and maybe use a La Fentoma, a skill magazine that increases our stealth. And then we head to a large circular electrode lying right in the floor between the vault door and the elevator door. This thing, whatever it is, has giant connectors sticking out of it and we see electricity hopping between them. From here, we see Father Elijah come down. He opens the elevator door, he walks to the blue force field, and he disables the vault security. He steps on down to this platform, and as he walks by, we have to sidestep 
around this conduit thing in order to remain hidden. This is admittedly very hard to do. I failed on more than one occasion. My character is not specced into stealth. I chose not to use the stealth boy. And if Father Elijah sees you out of the corner of his eye, he activates the vault security, blocking the exit door, and opens fire on you. But if we keep trying, if we're very quiet and very still, Father Elijah walks by without noticing us. He walks to the door of the vault and accesses the terminal. That's our cue. Now that he's stepped inside, we can stand up and race as quickly as our encumbered self can towards the pod. Just as we enter, the vault security turns back on. The blue force field closes. Huh? What's this? Alarms. What? You. Think you can run? This entire structure is mine to command. Security. Weapons. All. You think you've outsmarted me? You can't get away. You're the one on a leash. You always were. Father Elijah doesn't know that Sinclair has turned this vault into a trap. He doesn't know that by activating the terminal and reading the note that Sinclair had written for Dean Domino, that he had locked himself in the vault. Only we knew that because we got there first. But Father Elijah still has control of our explosive slave collar, and he has activated the countdown. We turn around and we walk to that elevator door as fast as we can. The elevator takes us back to the Villa Fountain, and with that, we complete the quest, Heist of the Century. Choosing this option, we get the achievement, Safety Deposit Box. If instead we choose to kill Father Elijah, we earn the achievement, Cash Out. If we choose to loot all 37 bars of gold from the vault, we have to wonder, have we learned our lesson? This entire adventure was about greed, showing the effects of greed, showing how one crazed man, driven by greed of technology, greed of wealth, greed of personal security, can wreak such devastation upon the Mojave. How the greed of one lounge singer, even though he was wealthy in his own right, helped lead to two broken hearts and his own destruction. How the lust for revenge, what could be called greed, from one bald Brotherhood of Steel scribe, led to permanent scarring and the loss of her own voice. And yet here we waltz into the vault, the courier, and not only defeat Father Elijah, but loot the place of its entire cash. Have we learned our lesson? In my mind, I don't think there's anything wrong with looting all 37 bars of gold from the vault. After all, we're not cheating to do so. And we didn't come here seeking riches. We came here as explorers, simply because we were curious. We didn't come for all of the same reasons that people have traditionally come to the Sierra Madre. Father Elijah tried to shame us in that final dialogue inside the vault, saying that by keeping us in the vault, he was giving us what we deserve a reward for being so greedy as to follow the Sierra Madre broadcast. But maybe we came just because we were curious, not because we were greedy, just because we wanted to know what was on the other side of that hill. And now that we are here, our possessions have been robbed from us. We've been separated from our companions, and we've seen the evils of this madman. I don't say anything immoral or unethical for taking the rewards of the vault for ourselves. If anything, it removes the lure now that the vault is raided, it can no longer attract treasure hunters. It can no longer lead to unnecessary deaths. After looting the vault, I stored my loot in a nearby container and went back to search for my companions. I went to the executive suite and I saw Vera's hologram walking around, but I could not find Christine. I went to the theater Tampico and turned the place upside down, but Dean Domino wasn't in his dressing room. He wasn't on the stage. He was nowhere to be found. I then went back to the cantina restaurant. The gas was turned off, but Dog or God had vanished. Where did they all go? Why can't I say goodbye? I then pulled open my Pip-Boy to see if I could find their radio broadcasts. I went through each one, but I didn't even hear static, and then, of course, I realized I wouldn't hear anything. By defeating Elijah, we deactivated the collars, allowing our companions to freely remove them. And then, I clicked on Elijah's frequency. <sighs> now, come on. You open up. Open the vault. I can make it worth your while. Think about what you're throwing away. I have other weapons, other technology I can share with you. And the big empty, I no 
know the way there. I know some of its secrets. If... The callers. The callers were a mistake. I see that now. <laughs> Why would I kill you? After all you've done, after all we've done together. Are you listening to me? Everything down here, I, I swear, so much you could see. You could rule the wastes with what's down here. Make your own army, reshape the world. And if others disagree, put collars on them. I, I can show you how. Don't you leave me here. You can't do this to me. You need to argue here. Machine, machine's losing power. No, I still have Pip-Boy light. Maybe, maybe. No, 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 it doesn't work. Where, where's the door? Can't find the door. Come. Been in worse situations. Find a way out. Somehow. Then find that courier. Maybe Veronica. No. No, she, she thinks I'm dead. Must be someone. Maybe that other courier. One, one with a flag on his back. Maybe... No, no, no. Said he'd never come to the Sierra Madre. No way out. Can't... Can't end like this. You. I know you can hear me. When you die, courier... I'll be waiting. Your grave's going to look just like this vault. When you die, I'll be waiting here. The Sierra Madre. Waiting. And with that, Father Elijah's voice disappears from the Mojave Wasteland forever. And at last... It is time to leave the Sierra Madre Casino. We have this one final moment to loot it of its remaining treasures. And then we walk out the door. We cannot come back. This is goodbye. The ending we receive is different depending upon the choices we make. If any one of our companions dies, we hear this. You've heard stories of the Sierra Madre Casino. We all have. This story is different than the others. It's all in promise of beginnings and the ending. But if we saved all of our companions, we hear this. The survivors of the Sierra Madre thought about gathering at the fountain and waiting for the courier. In the end, the caller's silence made them uneasy, and the fear of turning on each other made them hesitate and leave the goodbyes unspoken. The radio message at the fountain was enough for them and there was no need to add another farewell on top of all they had suffered. If Dog or God dies. When Dog fell in the Sierra Madre Casino, two died as one. Dog died hungry, alone, frightened. The voice in his head died with him, screaming, furious, enraged. But the voice was gone, and Dog was grateful. At least Dog was dead, and the voice needed to watch over him no more. In the moment before their lives ended, the wall between the two personalities fell. The two became silent as they saw the chain between them. Hunger and control are twin greeds, Something Dog and his shadow had never realized. If we choose to rescue only Dog... Dog, free of the voice inside his head, and no longer waiting on the voice of the Master, wandered back west. His hunger never ended. Often, small communities would suddenly vanish. They were assumed to have been hit by wasteland creatures and dragged away. Dogs, Brahmin, and humans alike. If we choose to rescue only God... Freed of both Dog and the one who held Dog's leash, the other voice resumed control. First the mind, then finally the mutant shell. His first act was to tend to the scars on the body with careful hands, slowly healing all the scars, except the ragged name... 
torn on his chest. He briefly thought of remaining at the Sierra Madre, but it was a monument built by humans, representing something he no longer needed. He began walking west, in search of others like him. As he did, he spoke of the courier who had set him free and allowed his life to begin again. And if we choose to merge the personalities of God and Dog... Dog forgot himself, as did the voice that raged within him. After their passing, a new voice spoke within the mutant shell. It was difficult for the voice to remember the two it once was. There was the beast, Dog, consumed by hunger. And the other, in reverse... The one consumed by control. Both were driven by need for the other. The courier brought them together somehow, joined the two into one. All that happened at the Sierra Madre was a faint memory to the new personality, like a flickering light in the clouds of the mind. The new voice did not think of the courier again until the battle at the Divide reached his ears. The battle between the two couriers, beneath the torn skies and the old world flag, each bearing a message for the other. And the mutant prayed the courier that had saved him had been saved in return. If Dean Domino dies... Dean Domino, entertainer, singer, thief had his last show on the Sierra Madre stage. The heist he spent over 200 years planning fell apart, just as the first, by underestimating his partner's strength. Not long after the courier left the villa, the lights in the theater shut off one by one. Only Dean's hologram remained on the stage, singing silently to an empty room. Still, as consumed as he had been with its riches and ruin, the Sierra Madre had held him captive long ago. If we save Dean Domino... Dean Domino, entertainer, singer, thief, explored the Sierra Madre not long after he was rescued by the courier. Once he left the theater, the Sierra Madre recognized him as a guest, and many doors opened to him. He had to admit it had been built to last. During his search, he came across the final records of Vera and Sinclair and realized what happened the night the bombs fell. He felt strangely sad for a moment, and he had no idea why. Shrugging it off, his mind turned instead to where the courier had come from. Vegas still survived, out there in the Mojave. It sights, sounds, and casinos, ripe for the taking. So, giving the Sierra Madre one last nod and a wink, he set off beyond the cloud to begin again. If we betray Christine and kill her... Christine, scarred by her hunt for Elijah and unable to let him go, perished in the Sierra Madre casino... She never completed her mission, nor did she stop to consider what had driven her to accept the mission in the first place. Obsession is another form of greed, a lesson that Christine never learned. But if we take pity on Christine and save her life... Christine, her mission complete, found new purpose as the Sierra Madre's warden. She watched over it silently, by choice, over time. The ghost people came to see her as one of the holograms. They would watch, silently, as she walked among them. At times, Christine thought of the courier, who had kept Elijah's hand from her throat. The courier reminded her of the other courier she had met in the Big Empty, and wondered if the two had found each other at last. She did not think of them again until she heard the legends of the Divide. The Divide, where the two messengers... The two couriers fought beneath an ancient flag at the edge of the world. 
The concluding slide to the Dead Money DLC is the same, no matter what choices you make, with one exception. If you save all of your companions, then all of their voices read this epilogue together. You heard of the Sierra Madre Casino? We all have. The legend, the curses. Some foolishness about it lying in the middle of a city of dead. A city of ghosts beneath a blood-red cloud. A bright, shining monument reaching out, luring treasure hunters to their doom. An illusion. A promise that you can change your fortunes. Begin again. Finding it, though, that's not the hard part. It's letting go. 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 After what must have been days, weeks of traveling, we arrive back at the abandoned Brotherhood of Steel bunker. We see a radio on a pedestal, and we resist the urge to destroy it. Heading into Father Elijah's lab, we can finally access his terminal. Inside, we can read a science entry, where he talks about how he was doing experiments on the cloud. It's here where we first begin to see his idea about using the cloud as a weapon to kill all life in the Mojave begin to form. Directly beneath this is a hollow message. We can download it to our Pip-Boy for later. We find a message that says, Automated message from Sierra Madre. The automated message says that the Sierra Madre Casino will deliver some chips to the Brotherhood of Steel bunker every three days. The chips come in the form of a voucher, and you can redeem them at the vending machine. However, you can only redeem them if you've won over 7,500 chips at the Sierra Madre Casino. This is something we should do before leaving the casino, but now that we've left, we have no way back. When we try to read the hollow message, it says that it's locked, and there appears to be some sort of locking mechanism on it. It also has a label, for Veronica. I wonder if she can unlock it. Heading back to the Lucky 38, we can talk with Veronica. Veronica, I found Elijah. You did? Where? Oh my god, I mean, uh, I, I thought... I don't even know what I thought might have happened to him. But you don't have a this is good news expression on your face. He's dead, Veronica. I had to kill him before he hurt others. You killed him? But it doesn't matter. He died when we all retreated to Hidden Valley. I didn't expect to see him again. No one did. Did he say anything when you met him? Anything... Anything at all? He left a message to pass along. Where did you get this? Guess I was right about the bad news, huh? Same look Elder McNamara always gave me when I was up for promotion. We have two choices here. The first option is to ask her to unlock it for us. Yeah, yeah. Thought as much. He'd been fading away for a long time. Would you mind if I looked at the message? When she does, we can refuse to give it to her and say, It was entrusted to me, not you. Fine. I guess it doesn't matter anyway. Keep it. I won't ask again. If we choose this option, we get the Elijah's Rambling perk, which increases the damage of our melee critical hits by 50%. However, the other option is to give it to her and ask her to watch it. All right. I'll watch it. That was... That was hard to watch. Did it make any sense, Veronica? The parts I understood? Didn't matter. Past all the garbage... All it amounted to was goodbye. Sorry. Feel a little out of it. Head spinning a bit. Oh. Oh! I think he left me a gift. Maybe I can use it better than he did. If we choose this option, Veronica gets the Elijah's Last Words perk, which increases her melee and unarmed attack damage by 25% and gives her a 25% chance to knock down enemies. And with that, our story about the Sierra Madre Casino comes to an end. Or does it? I've been promising a pre-war lore video about the Sierra Madre Casino every day this week, and I'm not about to let you down. Now that we've completed the modern story, the story that's taking place now, I'm going to spend time tomorrow going through every single terminal, every scrap of text, everything we find in the casino and in the villa grounds that tells us a story of Sinclair, Veracruz, 
Dean Domino, how the casino was constructed, and everything that happened there. I'm really excited about telling that story. It's going to be my favorite video. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss that video tomorrow, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. What are your thoughts on this story? Did you have as much fun as I did? What choice did you make at the end? Did you trap Elijah in the vault or did you kill him? Did you steal every last gold bar, or were you thankful to walk away with your life? Let me know in the comments section below. I read all of your comments, and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I have a t-shirt shop, ladies and gents. That's right, if you would like a Fallout or Oxhorn-inspired t-shirt, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers get access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.